getting ready for race three on the program. William Pye sitting down there on the grid waiting to go. So to this man, Paul Stokel. Can he pull off a victory in the third race of the day? Let's head to the drivers and see what their thoughts are. Uh, look, we've changed the car a lot again now. Uh, you know, we're, we're making drastic changes to try and improve it. So we're a fair way off in the last two races. So we can't go any further, you know, back hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you can't do a lot of Porsche racing in Hong Kong, so uh, this is it for me. I enjoyed coming down for the events. The car's feeling pretty good. Um, happy to go past a few of the Nation Cup guys. That was good off the start. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can do the same again in the next one. Yes, we want to keep the GD3s honest and still get, see if we can get ahead of a few of them. And heat number three coming your way at Sydney's Oran Park Raceway. Nathan Pretty on pole with Peter Brock alongside and Paul Stokell in row number two. Stephen Bornis right alongside him. William Pye continuing to do an outstanding job this week for the Australian Porsche Drivers Challenge. Theo Kondouris, David Janie and Trevor John in eighth spot. Coming up onto the start, finish straight. We're about to go racing. Side by side as they come down the front straight away now. Right on pole position. We've got Nathan Pretty and right alongside of him is Peter Perfect. He gets off to a pretty good start as they go down the front straight away. Mike Dennis there, who was the race director, saying that Peter Brock jumped the start. I think Brock probably hung back a bit. He got off to a pretty good start on the part of uh, Nathan Pretty. Stokel is in here as they swoop under the bridge for the first time, coming down to the right-hander. We go on board with Theo Gondouris now back to the front of the field. Brock still in second spot. Paul Stokel keen to get on with it. He's got this man, Stephen Burness, right behind him. Puts a wheeler out onto the dirt as well. well Burness is doing a pretty good job. Here's the rest of the field coming through into the right-hander on the approach to the bridge. As they swing through here, up over the bridge, we're looking at Paul Stokel to make a run towards the lead. There is Stokel. Just gets a little bit offline on the exit to that corner and picks up the dust, but he is still back in the pack just a little. I have to say, Mike, that a great job by the Australian Porsche Drivers Challenge cars this weekend. Never been in rolling starts before. They haven't put a foot wrong, and Peter Brock has. Well, Brock, I believe, has been radioed, so he's going to come to the pits in the next lap or so. But jumping the start, gee, that is a harsh penalty. But Mike Dennis called it. They sweep down the front straight away through the last corner, and that'll bring them back onto the shelf again. Pretty across the line. Brock in second place and looking for Stokel in there amongst them. And here comes Brock now. You can see the blinker on as he heads down into pit lane. Paul Stokel goes screaming past, picks up third, second spot in fact out on the circuit. Brock relinquishing that spot now. 0-5. There it is. Black flag for the pull right machine. Well, here's a, a recap of what happened. Now tell me where the jump was. There. Deary me. Brock may have inadvertently jumped but then he's up before they went to the first corner. Here's Stokel in car number one, exits the corner, running in second behind our race leader as they go down the front straight away. So Paul Stokel after the race leader, and that is Nathan Pretty. Look, I think it's pretty unfortunate. I, I find it hard to see how he jumped the start. Uh, by the time we got to the first corner, he was still in second position. I would assume if you jump the start, it would give you an advantage. I, personally, I don't agree, but of course they're not going to. James Brock, who drove that Monaro at the Clips of 500, now standing with frustration down in pit lane. You get the impression he doesn't like Mike Dennis and doesn't <laughs> believe that was the best of calls, but they go beneath the bridge as they head down the front straight away. And there's some actual terrific racing going on back in the pack. There certainly is down at the Porsche level of the field. Trevor John involved in a huge battle at the moment. Stewart looks up the inside. Oh, oh the two have touched. John has been put out into the dirt. A big shame for the copy world entry of Trevor John. And he's trying to get it out of there too. He's just buzzing the back wheel, so he's got it straight. So he's got a little bit of uh, coach work damage. Have a look at this again. I think I might just turn right here. Boom! And he gets it around sideways. He goes, so uh, I, I don't think uh, it was all his fault. Win, lose or draw, Trevor John is the big loser in that one. Nathan pretty out in front as we check out the race score. Stokel in second place. Bornes is back there into third there, followed by Pye. Then we look back through the pack. Tulin is up to sixth at this moment. And Brock is back to eighth place here at Oran Park. Time to have a look at Peter Brock. Age shall not weary him, nor the years condemn. He's won Bathurst ten times, and he's still competitive as ever. The Monaro, seven litres electronic fuel injection, rear-wheel drive, and 1,400 kilograms of Aussie muscle. Well, he's got to do it right from about the middle of the field in the pool right entry as he comes into this bottom corner, and I think he's got the dander up as well. Peter Brock, 0-5, and the seven-litre Monaro really smoky as he comes out of the bottom corner beneath the bridge at Yokohama. There's your race leader, but it's getting awfully serious.
Lewis oh. as they come out of this corner. Stovall goes to the inside. Nathan Pretty just in front of him. Pretty looking car and pretty good driver too. That's Nathan Pretty leads down the front straight away and Paul Stokel will probably fall to the inside or maybe he's just stalking him. Here he comes down, down the inside as we take race cam into the left-hander and he goes through now to take over the lead. Well, Nathan Pretty was balked out of that. He left the door wide open. Stokel said, I will take the advantage. And now Nathan Pretty comes back. What a good manoeuvre. Well, here comes Nathan Pretty back on the inside of the Alo Monaro to make the exit out of that corner and down to the right-hander. Stokel again, I think, has got that same electrical problem that he faced in the previous heat. In the meantime, Peter Brockers is still a long way back and trying to clear traffic. Worse than that, look at the yeah. flames bellowing out of the back of the Lamborghini. Sparks are flying and bang, something just went big time. Well, something has gone and he's on his way back to the pits and has slowed up appreciably. There he is in car number one, the man that was supposed to start in three races and win all three races this afternoon, and it hasn't turned out that way. And what disappointment for Paul Stokel. Look at the, look at the back of his car just glowing red. I think he's got some uh, problem with the uh, muffler system of the car because he's actually picked up the pace a little bit. It looked like he was out of this game, set and match, but he's managed to get with it again in car number one. So if they have a problem with the muffler system on the car, he's been able to overcome it. Well, here, here's what happened. Here's the replay. You can see Paul Stokel stuck the car down the inside. All fine so far as we go on board with the Lamborghini. Under brakes. Now, it must be somewhere on the exit of this turn that things went wrong because this is where Nathan Pretty got the run. Well, Pretty is still there on the inside of him. He takes the outside. Now, there's a problem here. Then all of a sudden, you see the sparks come off. Nathan Pretty goes past on yeah. the inside. Wouldn't surprise me if he's run over something because look at the light show that comes out of the back of the Lamborghini as he tries to climb the hill over the bridge. Just terrific stuff. I always thought it was a fire-breathing dragon, just not literally. Look at this. Unbelievable. Well, you'd swear by it he was on the pits, or on the way back to the pits, but uh, it got going again. Here's uh, Peter Brock coming back through the field in the full right entry, takes uh, up to about fourth spot of the race and exits out of that corner, stands on the gas as he gets going. Look at that, seven litres come into it as he goes across the line. Just throws the car down the inside of Theo Kandouris and says goodbye as they hit the start, finish straight. Now, as you said, Paul Stokel's come back up to race pace, so... That's a, that's a weird one. That's one for the record books. Well, Brock's got it all to do from the back of the field. Here we take a look again as he comes down here on the inside. And just watch the acceleration of the car as he comes screaming down here, jumps on the brakes and locks them up and goes from the inside straight out to the middle of the corner. That's not the way it's done in the textbook. But for Brocky, it was pretty good. And we saw the replay of that as they exit the corner. And now comes out of Recaro back onto the front straight. Oh, that's the its purpose anyway. Well, Andrew Smith's down in the pits. Let's see if he can shine some light on this. There's not really a problem with the car. He, he actually, he reported that he ran over something. It got caught around the back wheels. And whatever it was, it fired out somewhere on the back here. You can see it down the back here. I think he's run over somebody else's rubble or wreckage or whatever. And it's seen sparks and things flying everywhere. Seems to be OK now, but we've lost too much time to probably catch up. Thank you, Andrew. Clear as a clarion. That's the explanation of what went wrong. We'll see whether or not Stokel could actually come back through the field. Oh, look at the damage to Stewart's car. The front just hanging on after that coming together with Trevor John. Now, that might be a concern to some of the officials around the track. If bits and pieces start falling off that car, he may even get a black flag. Well, Stokel's uh, running over uh, some debris that, on the approach to the bridge there. Um, wow, oh, John Chulman. Yes, that was very much sideways. Well, he, do, he doesn't like the fact that he's behind Theo Kanduris out on the circuit at the moment. And it wasn't that evident. It certainly was. Now, just saying back to Stokel, uh, he's got a problem to overcome or attempting to overcome. And it's called distance. He's trying to pull in the race leader in the meantime, Peter Brock was going to go down the inside and switch to the outside on Stephen Bordes, who has actually been a model of consistency here at Oran Park this weekend. He's drove very well, but the Monaro has wrapped him up on the climb up over the Yokohama Bridge. You can see the might and the power of the Monaro there, though it's dancing across the circuit. Peter Brock, this is the Peter Brock of old, grabbing the car by the scruff of the neck and throwing it around the circuit, but time's getting away. Well, he comes out of the left-hander towards the uh, flip-flop, and Peter Brock uh, scouring away from the rest of the field in the meantime. Nathan Pretty coming through into the top corner now. 427 is his number, and he's starting to power away from the rest of the field. The man giving chase is Paul Stokel. Stokel here in the clarion entry, the Lamborghini comes into the corner. The time might be running out, but at this stage, he certainly still has him in his sights. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame that whatever went wrong with Paul Stokel, in actual fact, did, because you can see he's been able to get closer to the rear. 
of the 427 car. So we haven't have had that problem and we might have had a good race on our hands. But Nathan Pretty suffering from a little bit of understeer, particularly mid-corner at the moment. The race is not over for Paul Stoker. We'll want to have one big lunge. Well, the Jess Carmonaro comes down into uh, the bottom corner here, the left-hander. Now, he's very, very tightly on the brakes here to make sure he doesn't open the corner up too much for him. Swings out of here. The yellow Monaro running very, very strongly indeed as he exits the corner. And there's the gap back to second. That's, That's the man who's going to take second. That's Paul Stokel in a long way back to Tita Brock, who will pick up third place. Stephen Bordes, great, well done, fourth place. And William Pye was the next one in line. Kanduras, Chulin in there as well. We go back to Paul Stewart. He finished in the top ten. Trevor John from South Australia in 11th. Martin Bailey rounding out the field. Is Pete still a fierce competitor, you know, and uh, to beat him on any day is a, is a good day. So, you know, and to win, uh, yeah, it feels good. I caught Nathan and, and finally got past him. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I went to hit the accelerator, we, like, dropped, dropped six cylinders. So, uh, yeah, six-cylinder Lambo didn't quite have the power we needed, and he drove back past again. It stayed like that, and I, I thought our race was over. And then suddenly going across the flip-flop, it, it picked up, and away we went again. So can't explain it, but um, we managed to finish second, so it's not too bad. Well, Stephen, your first go at the Nations Cup, and what a way to do it, taking our trophy class. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of good fun. Very surprised. We didn't think we'd get, get this sort of result for this weekend, uh, especially against these cars, but it was great. Smiling faces from Oran Park Raceway in the GT class, Paul Stokel leads it by a country mile. He's had a great day today at Oran Park Raceway. Should have won everything. Didn't work out that way. That went to Nathan Pretty. In the trophy class, it is a lot tighter. We look forward to your company. Next time, we go racing.